Hello, and welcome to another GEMDS training video. In this video, we will be covering the configuration of VLANs on the Orbit MCR. Before we dive into the configuration, let's take a look at a typical topology. As you can see, we are starting with an Orbit MCR 900 AP and remote. Their IP addresses and NX radios have already been configured as shown. Let's say in our example that the Ethernet line coming in from the network is VLAN tagged. The management VLAN is 568 and the data VLAN is 569. The current configuration will need to be modified as we want to be able to isolate management traffic from data traffic by using the two VLANs. To do this, we must do the following. On both orbits for each VLAN we wish to use, we need to add and configure VLAN interfaces. Then we need to remove the physical interfaces from the bridge. Next, we'll need to configure the VLAN type on each physical interface. And then finally, we'll set the respective VLANs on each interface. After doing this, our drawing will change to the following. As you can see, we now have a management VLAN IP and a data VLAN IP on both orbits. On the AP, we have ETH1 and NX radio set as trunk ports. This is to allow the tagged frames to pass over the air to the remotes. And on the remote, we have the NX radio also set as a trunk. The Wi-Fi AP is set as a management port, and ETH1 in the terminal server is set as data VLAN ports. Note that this is just an example configuration, and you'll need to modify your configuration to fit your VLAN needs. Now that we have covered the basics, let's configure an AP in remote. In this case, I'll be starting with the AP configuration. After logging into the AP, we will want to expand the Interfaces menu, then select the Add Remove Interfaces option. In the Configuration table, click the Add button. Then in the drop-down menu, select the type VLAN, then give the VLAN interface a name. In this case, it will be VLAN 568. Click Basic Config. Then we'll give it a description. Expand the VLAN option. Then enter a VLAN ID. Again, this will be 568. Click IPv4. This is where you will give it an IP address. In our case, our management VLAN has a DHCP server, so I'll select DHCP. This unit also has a cell interface, and we want that to be the default route, so I'm going to uncheck the Request Routers checkbox. Then we want to move down to Filter. For the input, we want to use In Trusted. For the output, we'll want to use Out Trusted. The management VLAN config is now complete. Let's save our work. Next, we will repeat the same steps for the data VLAN. We'll select VLAN, then give it a name. Go to basic config. We'll give it a description, enter the VLAN ID. In this case, my data VLAN does not have a DHCP server, so I will add a static address. And again for the filter, we'll select in trusted for input and out trusted for output. And again, I'll save my changes. Now we will move on to the interface wizard by expanding wizards and then selecting the interface setup wizard.
At the first screen, you can press Next. The next screen is the Bridge Setup page. Because we are using VLANs, we will remove all of the interfaces from the bridge and set the IP type to None. Then we'll press Next. Here we have our Management VLAN setup. Note the name at the top. This is the name you assigned and may not be in the same order as what you see here. Because this is the AP, we want to trunk the VLANs. We will be adding ETH1 and the NX radio to the trunk port list. Then press Next. The next interface shown is our data VLAN. Again, to trunk the data VLAN, we'll drag ETH1 and the NX radio to the trunk ports list, then press Next. The interfaces we put in the trunk will use the IP settings of the VLAN, so here we can just press Next. In this example, we aren't using ETH2, so again, we'll just press Next. This is the NX radio setup page. As long as you have already configured the 900 MHz radio, you can just press Next. On the cell setup page, again, we'll press Next. We don't need a DHCP server running on this orbit, so we'll leave that disabled and press Next. At the end of each wizard is the summary screen. Here you can verify your changes, then press Submit to save them. Now that we've submitted the changes, the orbit will be expecting frames to come in tagged. Before we submitted the changes, we were using a port that was untagged, so we'll now we'll lose communication with the orbit. Now is when you would either switch to a trunk port on your network, or reconfigure the current port to be a trunk. In my case, I have a switch with a trunk port ready, so I'll just move the cable over to that one. After doing that, I will refresh the page to verify that I've regained connectivity. This looks good, so we can now move on to configuring the remote. After logging in, we will expand Interfaces, then Add Delete Interface. And just like we did on the AP, we're going to create our Management VLAN and our Data VLAN. For the sake of time, I'll speed the video up, as this is the same configuration as the AP. Now that we've created our VLAN interfaces, let's go back to the Interface Setup Wizard. Again, we'll click Next. We'll remove the interfaces from the bridge, set the IP type to None. Then we'll press Next. This is where the configuration will differ from the AP. As shown in the Visio drawing, we want our Wi-Fi to be a management access port, so we'll drag Wi-Fi over to access ports. Then we want the NX radio to trunk the management VLAN, so we'll drag the NX radio over to trunk ports. For now, we'll leave ETH1 and ETH2 as available interfaces. Now on the data VLAN, again we want to trunk the NX radio, and then we'll set ETH1 and ETH2 as access ports. Again, here we can press Next. And for ETH2, we can press Next. The NX radio is already configured, so we'll press Next. Press Next at the cell. Our Wi-Fi is already configured, so we'll press Next. Leave the DHCP server disabled. And then at the summary screen, review your changes, then press Submit.
Now that we submitted the changes, the NX radio is expecting frames to come intact. So again, we'll switch over to a trunk port to regain connectivity. Just refresh the page to make sure we're good. This looks good. Our VLAN configuration is now complete. Thank you for watching another GEMDS training video. For more information, check out our other videos or visit our website at GEMDS.com.